This podcast was produced by Sean Weston Media. From a dimly lit cupboard somewhere in England, two people chat about communications. Sometimes they chat about other things. Welcome to From the Comms Cupboard. Should we automate messages? Do you mean messages uh, to uh, the rest of the organisation? Yeah, or to clients or customers. Are we talking spam? <laughs> Hopefully not spam. But I think we can all agree we don't want spam. And a lot of spam is automated. Exactly. So does that mean good stuff can't be automated? Valuable stuff? I think you're right. I think good stuff can be automated. Um, do I want an inappropriate one? No. When I say inappropriate... I mean, when you get that automated message from your bank or something and they're trying to sell you something you already have, it means there was no connection. They didn't really know me. They don't know you. They don't know me. It's always frustrating when you get even a pop-up message on a website because you've looked at another website and they're advertising something that that other company may sell. And that's frustrating, isn't it? Well, it's an algorithm. Mm. But, do you know, behind every automated email or message or algorithm is a human that put it together in the first place. Absolutely. If we bring this to an internal communications discussion, when certain messages go out or automated Slack and things like that, should there be more moderation, maintenance of those automated messages? I think definitely has to be. If you have an internal audience and you've got messages set up, you really need to be aware of what what's coming out and be able to quickly adapt if something changes. So, for example, a senior manager leaves the business, but you've got six blogs set up from them or six vlogs coming out from them over the next six weeks. That's a really good point. That's a really good example because often content is scheduled. Yes. Or hopefully it is, oh. if, you've got the time, if you've got enough content. Welcome to my life. <laughs> so what skills do you think you need to be able to really manage an automated content? Well, well, you see, I think this is where the book is often passed. And say you're in a marketing team and, and you know that, look, I have to schedule content. I need this blog to go Monday from the CEO. I need this to go on Thursday afternoon. And then they don't take ownership of it. They leave mm. it to someone else to fiddle behind the scenes and create those automations. And, I, and that's where I think you separate yourself from ownership. You become disconnected from the process of the automation. And so the CEO leaves that week and you remember, oh, you know, a good case scenario, you remember that, You've got some content going out written by that CEO, but he's not our CEO anymore. So we have to stop that content. Oh, the guy that I gave it to is on holiday this week. Hmm. I don't know how to do it. So you, what you need is some good technology to help you as well. Yeah. That's shared across multiple people. It's, it's, it's not one person's responsibility to monitor everything. No. Well, this is where I think skill sets should be a little more... Um, uh, it should be wider yeah you know that that marketing person or that internal comms person or you know the person creating the automation should learn how to take control of it and they should do it themselves mm -hmm. so that then and and that whole team should the internal comms team everyone knows how to cancel a scheduled blog i think so many things are campaign led these days that you're going to have i don't know content going out across five, six, seven different channels over periods of weeks. Are you going to be following up with different things, especially in kind of external communication spaces? How do you manage that differently? Well, is it is it a case of having stretched yourself too far into the future? So, so some logistics mm. come into it. You see, in my opinion, automation is actually rather useful. Yeah. But I think you have to stay on top of it. If you jump too far ahead... Let's do a case scenario. Can you imagine if you had set up a load of great tweets around an event that you were attending 
Yes. And then coronavirus hit, and every event in the world was cancelled. Yeah. Flights were cancelled. You weren't going to that event anymore. And four weeks into coronavirus, a load of tweets go out saying, hey, we're in Manchester today, or we're in Bangkok, and we're at so-and-so event. Yeah. Well, that event was cancelled weeks ago. You look foolish. Your business looks foolish. People start questioning. People laugh, don't they? People and laugh, yeah. You lose the credibility. Because you didn't stay on top of the scheduling you didn't mm. stay on top of the automation so would you use one tool to do that then is that an important thing so that you have you know everything's in one place and is controlled in one way i think so it's better management then isn't it if you have loads of tools it's only more complexity i think you know use buffer use hootsuite for social media content use wordpress if that's what you're using what about internal communications is there a case when you're using an internal commu communications tool and you're scheduling things, or is that not really a thing? It is a thing, and it's great to think you can get to that place. I think it takes a lot of planning. Um, I think for a campaign, you would probably do that. So if it's for, I don't know, I'm thinking of something that happens every year, like your performance reviews, and you want to have those communications coming out over a period of time, you might schedule different things to happen and go out and pre-write them all and that that was a great place to be so i think from a campaign in a similar way you would do externally you would you would do the same maybe that doesn't happen as regularly with internal comms as external mm. but i think it's still something that you would need to be on top of if anything changed or you know the date changes or something silly like that something quite unremarkable changes you've got to make sure that everything changes then everything changes but you are we asking internal communications professionals to be a little bit more C-3PO, a little bit more techie? Yeah, absolutely. I think, go back to your earlier point, everyone needs to know how to do everything. I don't think you could be a professional communicator without understanding how technology works and your tools. So no, it's like any job, isn't it? If you're a carpenter, know your tools. If you're a communicator, know your tools. So make sure that you understand how it all works, how you can edit things, how you can stop things importantly. But also think of it in a positive way. Automation is going to save you time. I think communications jobs can be quite up and down. You can be hugely busy at one moment and quiet at another time. So use those quiet times to schedule things um, and understand how, how that works. So I think it is important. And let's face it, the real upside of this is that it allows the IT department to have more time fixing Microsoft Windows. 